Hey guys, Kevin here from Pwn Zone Gaming, bringing you some gameplay and commentary from Spiral Knights. Now, if you haven't seen my last couple of videos on YouTube, I've been covering free-to-play games on Steam that give you free Team Fortress 2 hats. So the hat we're looking to get today is called the Spiral Salad. Now, this is basically a medieval helm uh, that you can put on any Team Fortress class. So we're playing through Spiral Knights in order to get that. If you're looking for this game, make sure you just go on Steam and search for Spiral Knights. Now, basically, this game um, is not my favorite, um, so this is going to be more of a tutorial than a review, because the first couple times I played through this, um, I ended up getting lost, and it took way longer than it should have, so in order to help you guys out to not get lost, this is going to be more of a tutorial explaining kind of how you go um, about your path through this game. So, like I said, I wasn't a big fan of this game. Um, it's kind of just a simple little RPG shooter. Um, again, kind of not my style. I'm more of a first-person shooter kind of guy. So, you basically progress through the game using your mouse. Um, there's only two real buttons. I'm sure there's other keys that you can use. Um, but you have your left mouse, which basically you hold down in order to move um, in the direction that your mouse is pointing. And then you use your right click in order to um, shoot or to... Slash. Now you can actually use your mouse wheel in order to change between your two primary weapons which one is a sword and the other one is kind of a little laser pistol so you have close range and distance. Now you can see that I kind of ran through that level pretty quick just looking for um, the buttons and things like that. Basically you're just running through this game looking for buttons, um, breaking things, looking for buttons, you're trying to hit buttons. Um, basically it's just buttons and breaking things um, and finding keys to open gates. So once you get to this camp, um, this is one of the parts that you should definitely be watching um, and you should definitely rewatch if you're having trouble with this game. Um, the first time that I came through this, um, the levels I found were pretty easy to figure out exactly what you're doing, um, but these camps I kind of got lost in them and wasn't really sure what to do with the menus. So at the menu you're definitely going to want to click on one of those first two missions and I clicked on the second one first and came to this little level, uh, found out you weren't really supposed to do anything came back to the lift and click descend. Now if you ever come to a lift in this game you're going to want to make sure you click descend because if you um, instead click ascend um, you're going to be undoing the work that you've already done. So now if you, obviously you've probably already seen, I've sped up this footage significantly. Um, there are quite a few levels that you need to go through and in order to put them all into this video so that you guys can see um, exactly what you need to do, um, I've had to speed it up so that this video isn't like 30 minutes long. Um, so in order to save your time and mine, um, made sure to speed it up. So again, we're looking for keys, so basically you're just running through doing the exact same thing. Um, you do get a few game variations, like you'll see that I'm shooting different crates. There's some that, uh, if you shoot them, they kind of vaporize all the boxes around them. There's some that if you shoot them, it kind of shatters all the boxes. Um, but basically, you're supposed to play this game with a team. Um, I think you can have up to four people playing. Now, the team does get kind of annoying at times. In uh, some places, you have these buttons where you have to have all of the team members stand on it in order to progress through the game. So if one of your teammates is screwing around and not standing on the button, um, it can be very frustrating, and I've had that happen a lot while I was actually recording the footage for this video. So you can see that um, right now we're kind of in a little team battle. Um, we have a whole bunch of enemies coming in, and you can't really progress until you finish it. So once we uh, get to the lift, we progress through, and I'm back at that little depot. Now, I realized that I had to finish both missions, not just one, so I clicked to start that first one. Um, this one's really stupid and really easy. You basically just click through the menu, and you're done pretty much <laughs> instantly after you click through, like, two things. So now you're going to click on the mission that is on the next page, and you're going to want to start that. Now, um, when I first started this uh, mission, I had... Basically, it was just me and my party. Now, this is the best case scenario. Again, descending, um, not ascending, as you'll see there. Now, because um, I'm playing by myself, I said it's the best case scenario, and that's because, again, you don't have to rely on your team. You can kind of just rush through this, because um, when I was doing it, I was doing it specifically for the Team Fortress hat. Um, if you actually like this game, um, which there are some elements to like, um, there's kind of an open economy. You can trade. Um, it, you can upgrade weapons and things later on. Um, but I was ended up doing it for the hat, so I was kind of just going for as much speed as possible. You can see here I'm not even killing these enemies, which look like bouncing pieces of jello. And I uh, just kind of rushed past them in order to get the keys to that gate. Now, in that area that I just passed, there's basically uh, two keys, so you can either go to the left or the right. And you can kind of continue on um, opening gates and looking for things. If you can't find things, um, chances are 
basically if you get stuck, chances are you're looking for either a button, um, which is underneath something, so just start blowing stuff up until you find a button, or you're looking for a path that's kind of um, hidden, you're not really, you don't really see it because they start you in a weird spot. So just make sure you're using your map up in the top right corner and you should be fine. Now here again we've come to another little city setting, um, again one of the places that I got lost in the first time that I came here. So this is the path that you need to take, basically running straight from where you spawn um, all the way up until you get to what's called the arcade. So if you're not at the arcade, don't go in there, um, otherwise you're going to get kind of off. So right after you go through that uh, little lift, you're going to run over and talk to this guy. Um, again, because it's an RPG, there's going to be a ton of text, and you're going to just click through it like uh, crazy, unless you want to actually read it. So then you can pick any of these lifts in order to um, progress through the game in order to get the hat. I decided to pick the fourth one, so if you want to pick the fourth one then you can kind of follow along with this tutorial otherwise you're kind of on your own but again the they all result in the same thing which is getting a hat so basically um, I think there's three more levels that I end up actually playing through this one um, like I said before you're either looking for a button or you're looking for a path they kind of started you out in this area and it took me forever to realize that I needed to go down instead of up um, so again just kind of look around and they'll put stuff for you to pick up and coins and things that you're actually supposed to spend um, but I was just kind of rolling around looking for that hat. Now you will see um, here that the game gets a little bit more challenging. You can see that there's um, things that kind of move back and forth and there's spike uh, traps on the floor and things like that. Um, those are some of the things that actually uh, come along later in order to make the game a little bit harder, a little bit more entertaining. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention um, was that you do have a little shield. Um, I didn't really talk about this much, um, and I didn't really use it too much in the video, but if you are actually serious about playing this game, that'll probably come in handy. Basically, if you hold X on your keyboard, you'll pull up a little bit, um, or a little shield, and it will deflect damage from uh, enemies, so it's definitely helpful um, if you're getting ambushed. So I kind of roll through, again, waiting for my teammates to catch up. You can see I'm typing there to help tell them to hurry their asses up. We have another little team brawl, and move along through these gates. So, um, there are some little side things. There's these, like, crystals. Um, you'll see me picking one of them up here. I'm kind of wearing it on my back. I'm not sure exactly what those do. Again, um, if you actually got a little bit more into the game, you would probably uh, understand exactly what those are um, and know what they did. I'm sure that they give you little bonuses because um, later on you were able to pick things up that would kind of give you bonuses. So I can only assume um, that that is what that does. You can see there I was using my shield a little bit, and I'm progressing on to the last level right before you get the achievement. Um, this one is called, I think, Graveyard, and basically you just rush past a whole bunch of zombies. Um, my teammate decided that he wanted to fight them, so I just kind of went along until I blew everything up and found the button. Now you will see whenever I'm fighting these zombies that I kind of throw things at them to light them on fire. Um, there's these little barrels. Um, I would definitely recommend using those when you have the chance. Um, you just basically pick it up by um, right-clicking, and in some cases you need to use pots in order to throw them at buttons and things, and that's how you do that as well. Um, so once you light those people on fire, they die much easier and you can progress more quickly through the game. As you can see, we're just killing uh, hordes and hordes of these little zombie characters um, rushing through the graveyard. Continuing on, and we are almost to the very end. Now, in order to get here, um, it did not take me that long, probably about 30 minutes, and I did get lost um, one or two times, and I had to wait for some teammates. But you'll see that we did meet, uh, reach the clockwork terminal, which is what you're looking for, and up in the top right corner, I got the achievement that we're looking for. So, if we flip over to Team Fortress 2, you can see that, I click next there, I have the Spiral Select now. So, uh, again, this is an all-class hat, and I, it's definitely one of my favorite hats uh, in the game because um, if you're playing a medieval demo or anything like that, it definitely just completes the look there. So I love wearing this hat on, like, Degroot Keep uh, and stuff like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you go and download Spiral Knights. Again, it is free, and you can get a free hat in Team Fortress, so I definitely recommend uh, just investing like a half an hour in order to get this hat. So um, again, make sure you subscribe, rate, and comment to my channel. I have a new video coming out every week. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.